Hello and welcome to Talent Sprint. In this session of polity, we shall discuss about the part 5 of Indian constitution that is the union. So the union consists of articles 52 to 151 but we shall discuss only the important ones. So the first we shall discuss about the union executive that is it consists of the president, vice president and the council of ministers. So first we shall discuss about the president of India from articles 52 to 62 and other important articles like article number 72. So moving on to the first article that is the president of India. So article 52 says there is there shall be a president of India who shall be the first citizen of the country. Moving on to the next article that is article number 53. So what does article number 53 says executive power of the union. The executive power of the union shall be vested in the president. That means whatever activity that is carried out by the government is done on the name of the president. Okay. And the supreme command of the defense forces of the union is shall be vested in the president. That means he is the supreme commander of all the three armed forces. That is air force, navy and military. So all these three forces are headed by the supreme commander called president. So the executive power of the union shall be vested in the president and he is the supreme commander of the armed forces. Moving on to the next article that is article number 54. Election of president. Then how a president is elected? Is he directly elected or indirectly elected? Yes, indirectly elected. How is elected? He is elected by an electoral college separately constituted. He is elected by an electoral college which is separately constituted which consists of the elected members of both the houses of parliament. What do you mean by both the houses? Both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Only elected members, not nominated members. Only elected members, either directly elected or indirectly elected, but not nominated members. Moving on to other section, that is elected members of the state legislative assemblies, that means elected MLAs. So these people participate in the election of the president. First is elected members of both the houses. And next is elected members of the state legislative assemblies. So this constitutes the electoral college for the election of the president of India. Okay. Then moving on to the next article that is article number 55. Manner of election of president. So how he is elected by that group that is an electoral college. But what is the method of election? It is proportional representation through single transferable vote. So what do you mean by proportional representation? That means each state has different set of population and different MLAs and MPs. So they have their own votes. Each state has their own votes. So they will be given ballot papers. They have to choose the preference. First preference, second preference. They have to write the preference. It is not like general election which people vote through EVMs. Okay, because it is an indirect election. Okay, so they will be given ballot papers and they have to choose the first preference, second preference. Who has, whoever gets the highest preference of votes, they will, be, they will be declared as the president of India. That is called proportional representation through single transferable vote. Suppose no one gets majority, the person who has got least votes will be eliminated and his votes will be transferred to others. So this is called single transferable vote. Okay. So just simply remember it is proportional representation with single transferable vote. Okay. So this is the method of election of president of India. The same method is followed for vice president, Rajya Sabha members and legislative council members. That is the same proportional representation with single transferable vote. Okay, moving on to the next article that is term of office of the president. So what is the term of office of the president? It is for five years. Uh, president shall continue from the date of appointment from for five years. Okay, this is the term of office of president. He may submit his resignation to the vice president. He may write his resignation to the vice president but not prime minister or any others. So he will submit to the vice president of India or 
he may be removed under the article number 61 that is called impeachment of president okay and moving the president shall continue irrespective of its expiration of the term till the new president comes to office that means suppose today he has completed five years terms new president is not ready so the old president will continue till the new president is elected this is the meaning of this line okay so these are the conditions of the term of office of the president so the total term of office is five years okay moving on to the next article that is article number 57 eligibility for re-election so in india president of india is eligible for re-election any number of times suppose if you take us it is only two terms there the term of office is four years so four years for plus four years it is eight years so after eight years the president cannot contest in the us but in india any number of times he can be re-elected okay next is article number 58 qualification for the election of president so what is the qualification first he must be citizen of india this is the must and he must complete 35 years of age minimum age is 35 years to contest as president of india and he must contest he must be eligible to contest as the member of Lok Sabha only, not Rajya Sabha, only Lok Sabha. That means he must be qualified to be elected as Lok Sabha member. So these are the three conditions for the qualification to be elected as President of India. Moving on to the next article that is article number 59. Conditions for President's office. So what are the conditions? Suppose if he is member of any house, he shall resign and contest. That is the meaning of this conditions for president office. Suppose he is member of Lok Sabha or suppose he is member of Rajya Sabha or in the state legislature. Then he has to resign and contest. And he must not hold office of profit. Okay, any government job or any private job is considered as office of profit. Okay, so he must not hold any office of profit. These are the conditions for the office of president. Moving on to the next article that is oath or affirmation by the president. Then who administers oath for the president? Yes, it is the chief justice of India. That is the chief justice of Supreme Court. Suppose if chief justice of India is not available, the senior most judge of Supreme Court who is nominated by the chief justice of India shall administer oath for the president. So first is Chief Justice of India will administer oath to the President. Okay, so this is article number 60. Moving on to the important article that is impeachment of the President. That means how President is removed in India. Though he is first citizen of India, he can be removed only for the violation of the Constitution. What do you mean by violation of constitution? That means not othering to the constitutional laws. If you don't follow the constitutional laws, that is called violation of the constitution. So president can be removed only for the violation of constitution. Next, first how will be removed? A removal resolution must be taken up, supported by one-fourth of the members of any house. It may be Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. It must be supported by one-fourth of the members. Giving 14 days of notice. Minimum prior notice is 14 days. Okay. So this re resolution must be supported by one-fourth of the members. And it must be given with a notice of 14 days. And then it must be passed by two-thirds of the total membership of the both the houses. So first it must be passed with, by the two-thirds of first house. Then it must be passed by the two-thirds of next house. So if it is passed in the two houses, then the president stands to be removed. So it is not an easy process to get the two-thirds majority. Why? To form a government in Lok Sabha, we need just half of the majority. Example, 545 is the strength of Lok Sabha. Half of 545 plus 1 is 273. To form a government, I need 273 mark. But to remove a president, I need two-thirds of the total majority. Two-thirds of the total membership. That means two-thirds of 545. And two-thirds of 245. 
So that is not an easy number. So that's why president removal is very tough. And no president will be impeached because it may be a guilt for the nation. Because he is the first citizen of the country. Okay. So this is the article number 61. Impeachment of president of India. Moving on to the next article that is article number 62. Time of holding elections when there is vacancy for the president and continue to hold the vacancy. How? Suppose if there is a vacancy for the office of the president. So when elections must be held? Elections must be held before the expiration of the term. Suppose now five years term is completing. It is nearby. So elections must be held before that five year term. Suppose if there is death and resignation of the president, then from the date of vacancy, the election must be held within six months. Okay, within the six months, the election must be held. So this is the conditions for the vacancy of the president. Okay, first generally it must be held before the expiration of the term. If the vacancy is created because of the death and resignation, the election must be held from six months from the date of vacancy okay so this is article number 62 next is the important article article number 72 power of president to grant pardons regarding punishments so in which cases the president can pardon so president can pardon in three cases so the first one is the punishment under union laws so if, if anyone receives punishment under union laws, the president can pardon. Okay. And the next case is punishment by a court martial. What is court martial? Court martial is a special court for the armed forces. So if any punishment given by the court martial, that can be pardoned by the president. And the next is punishment or death sentence by any court in India, even by district court. So death sentence means hanging to death. So even a district court gives it, the president can pardon. So these are the three cases. Punishment under union laws, punishment under by court martial and death sentence by any court. Okay. So this is all for this session about the president of India. We shall continue in the next session. Thank you.